Hi, welcome to Pacific Currents. I'm Mike Facey with the Pacifica Land Trust, and I'm here with Joe Chamberlain of the Coastside Land Trust, and welcome all of you to our program tonight. And Joe, would you like to tell us what we're talking about this evening? Well, Mike and I have the privilege of speaking with you this evening about preservation of open spaces on the coast side here in San Mateo County. Excellent. So uh, I'm, uh, I've been a Pacifica resident since about 1982, and I've been a biologist for many years now and involved in uh, really passionate about trying to preserve open spaces in uh, our region, in Pacifica in particular. And uh, so been with the Land Trust since about 1995 and active in a number of different capacities. Uh, but we're an all-volunteer board, as we'll get into. And uh, so I, I am, that's, I'm not, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. So, sure. Yes. Yeah. So um, I have the privilege of being a, a staff member. I'm the executive director at the Coastside Land Trust. And we came through the same beginnings as you as volunteer board mm -hmm. and then transitioned to uh, paid staff in 05. And since then, it's made a big difference to our organization. And I've had the privilege of being their ED since 08. And previous to that, I worked in education and other nonprofits mm -hmm. and for profits. But the entire time, I volunteered for nonprofits. Mm -hmm. and. Um, and just felt that land, you know, preserving land is really the calling uh, that, that obviously right. both of us have, right? right? So, so uh, yeah. So, tell us a little bit about why why you uh, why this is such a passion for you. Why is saving land such a passion? Well, I think for the same reason it is for uh, the people who are our supporters, and that is I love being outside, I love walking along the shore, walking in the hills, seeing the animals and the plants, seeing other people enjoying themselves. Bike, biking, wiping dogs, whatever it might be. How about you? Well, you know, I've, I've uh, here in Pacifica, we've uh, many of our real uh, uh, sort of the, this landscape has been parceled up and there really aren't very many uh, remnant pieces left, even though it kind of looks like mm -hmm. there isn't. Thankfully, we do have a lot of open space in Pacifica. But so my passion is to try to try to preserve some of those wonderful remnants and the, 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 uh, uh, both from the standpoint of trying to protect the ecology of our system and also to provide uh, the community an opportunity to enjoy uh, these uh, wonderful uh, species and ecosystem habitats themselves and also to frame it in such a fantastic setting right here along the coast. It's uh, just a really a wonderful uh, uh, opportunity for me personally to have been able to, to contribute to that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that undertaking. Yeah. Um, well, it's interesting um, that you say that, Mike. I know that, um, you know, our country comes from a long heritage through the federal park system of preserving open space for the public, for the mm -hmm. community to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, the, uh, the government's done, the municipalities, the federal, state, and county, and locals have done a terrific job with parks and open space. Um, but this this new dynamic of, of land trusts is, mm -hmm. um, is a component that really facilitates that. And right. I'm not sure everyone quite understands how we work with the, with the municipalities. Yeah. And, yeah. and how, does, yeah. how does the Pacifica Land Trust work with the municipalities? We uh, are very, our, our origin actually uh, came out of a, uh, the uh, open space committee and an open space report back in the early 1990s. And uh, we recognized then uh, as a community that, that that there were really just a small, relatively small number of really important parcels that were left to be preserved. And uh, so one of the recommendations was to start a land trust so that we could uh, work with property owners in confidence, um, try to make sure that people get a fair shake for mm -hmm. uh, being willing to sell their property or, or mm -hmm. provide easements on their property for open space. And so it became, it was a, recognized as a really important method of fair dealing with uh, uh, property owners with the idea of acquiring those lands for open space. Well, you make a good point. Um, municipalities often don't have the resources to really focus on acquiring a piece of property and protecting right. it and really caring for it. And that that's the power of a land trust is that we do. We have 100% focus on making that happen in right. a way that municipalities simply can't in today's world. I think that's really true. Now. Our land trust, as I pointed out earlier, is a, a volunteer land trust. And, and we have, in, in the past, primarily uh, acquired lands 
worked with Coastal Conservancy, for example, to get the funds to acquire those lands and transfer the lands into, the, into management by other agencies such as the National Park or the county or the mm -hmm. state. Um, one, our first acquisition was a place called Peter Point Headland, which uh, was a little complex in the bottom line as we were not able to transfer that property into another uh, jurisdiction to another management agency. So we've been managing that property for almost 20 years now. And it, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, I really think it's become one of the highlights of our land trust experiences is, is developing a community, <coughs> excuse me, stewardship program for that land, but working with the community, working with other agencies as well. But primarily, we take volunteers up there every month and uh, try to do what we can to enhance that landscape. And it's, uh, that's, that's been one of the most fun mm -hmm. things that we've done, really, as far as sure. I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a, a probably a, a little more dramatic but mm -hmm. similar um, beginnings for our land trust. Um, there was a significant threat of development, which mm -hmm. would have um, hugely impacted. As long as the Ocean Shore Railroad, the, right. the historic yep. Ocean Shore Railroad, was going to be developed into duplexes and it, mm -hmm. or triplexes or something like that, and it was going to close off a large segment of the beach access. Mm -hmm. And so the community rallied, and uh, through a gift from the state of California, we were able to acquire the property for two and a half million dollars mm -hmm. as a gift to our community from the people of the state of California. So our origins come from a gift from the entire state to right. our little community. Right to say, yes, open space is important, and right. we will give you this gift to make sure that it, it's yours forever. So that was the beginning of our land right. trust, and we've been able to build on that and the goodwill <coughs> that we were able to create with that activity. What, what year was that, just out of curiosity? I believe that was in the late 90s yeah. that that occurred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is uh, one of the things that I, you know, watching land trusts evolve over time, the last 20 years, basically. Uh, one thing that really strikes me is that our population, not just in Pacifica, but in the surrounding region, just keeps increasing and increasing right. and increasing. Right. And the places for people to go and recreate right. are proportionately smaller as a result. Sure. So open space and open space recreation, whether it's along the beach or on the headlands or on the trails, it becomes increasingly precious. And that's something I think we can do. And the other thing that uh, kind of goes along with that over time is that a lot of the the funds for open space acquisition and management at both federal and state levels have to some degree diminished mm -hmm. and at least in our mm -hmm. experience and so um, it it means that the nonprofit land trusts become all the more important all the more mm -hmm. and the public becomes all the more important in supporting those acquisitions uh, through private donations and other kinds of vehicles along those yeah, lines. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> and you, you bring up a, an excellent point about how valuable the lands are that we're working on. Um, there are millions of people <laughs> just, yeah. you know, to the east of us. and. Right. Um, and, and it's because of them that we're able to do much of our work because they want to be able to get in their vehicle and drive for a few minutes and have this gorgeous right. recreational area. And they don't want it to be like Los Angeles where it's mm -hmm. just solid door-to-door mm -hmm. -door development. They right. want to have the agricultural areas, the open space, the redwoods, the, right. the wetlands, the beach access, the right. beautiful vistas. Right. And that's one of the reasons that our um, land trust, and you know, I would appreciate if you'd speak mm -hmm. to, to yours focus, but our focus has been, and certainly in current years, is land on the west side of Highway 1. Hmm, interesting. So the people's experience when they come to the coast site mm -hmm. is that they can look out at the ocean and have these beautiful vistas from the roadway right. and of course stop right. and get out right. and hike and, and right. walk and all that. So that's been our strategic focus in the, in the recent years is really to protect those lands. Yeah, that's great. And I, <clears throat> you know, our we're fortunate in a way in that we have state park property and Mm -hmm. uh, some property that is, well, so far at least not developable, like Rockaway yeah. Head. Who knows when that, you know, that if that's going to be the case in the future. But for the most part, uh, a lot of that property has been preserved. One of the key parts of uh, our coast, which is Maury Point, uh, we were instrumental in helping to save and and get turned into the, uh, the national park, and it's been managed by the National Parks Conservancy, and they've done a fantastic job uh, with that piece of property. And so, so we, um, 
and we also did it did acquire uh, some property really really precious on the mouth of San Pedro Creek so that allowed us to open up the creek uh, and build essentially a, or, or restore a marsh and allow the flood control project which is built upstream which is kind of relies upon floods being able to expand out mm -hmm. so that it didn't get bottled up at the at the at the mouth right. so it's a fantastic place sure. uh, but it's also has a lot of really important function for our community as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. and of course Pedro Point Headland so you're right yeah, yeah we have focused <laughs> a lot on that I, I, I have to admit but there have been a few other places we've actually uh, acquired a piece of property in uh, um, on Sweeney on Sweeney Ridge, really, and and that so it's and which actually was in San Bruno, but it was a piece of property owned by Pacifica <laughs> that they were going to develop. Oh no! So it was you know like <laughs> no, we can't. So anyway, we've we've, we've had some uh, really interesting uh, successes, I think. How about yeah. how about do you want to describe some oh, of your? Oh yeah. So um, so we currently have over 165 properties mm -hmm. in fee title, which fee title means that you own the property, right. and uh, and we have 24 conservations which we have acquired because um, because uh, the developer has been required to preserve right. mostly riparian mm -hmm. areas, creek mm -hmm. areas, right. um, and uh, that that we monitor and care for or, or oversee every year. Um, but I think the the most exciting thing we're currently working on is an extension of the California Coastal Trail oh, from Poplar fantastic. Beach South in right. Half Moon Bay. Right. And um, this is the first time we've uh, done a trail construction project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been really a dynamic and fun thing. The Conservancy has been delightful and the awesome. city and the county to work with. They've been so supportive. Uh, because they recognize how important it is that right. these trail extensions in these lands, and and I think that's I don't, I, I don't know how it is here in Pacifica, but our communities, uh, both our county and our cities, uh, that we're working in, really recognize the value of these open spaces uh, to the community and and to the greater community. Right. Uh, and, right. and as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. people come from all over the world to right. see these right. um, to, to to go yeah. birding at Wavecrest. It's the most one of the most famous sure. raptor viewing areas. Yeah. in the world in the fall people come from uh, from Europe just to see these gorgeous birds so yeah so. I, I think that's that's such a wonderful point we we are getting more active in trail development and we mm -hmm. are one of our, our visions is to connect up we you know from say Pedro Point Headland which is now right there across the highway from the, the, the north uh, portal of the tunnel and will be the this a staging area for uh, the the new trail that will go around mm -hmm. the old Devil Slide mm -hmm. Highway, and from there you can there is a now a, currently a trail that's over private property, but it goes up San Pedro Mountain to the saddle with Montero Mountain, and then you can climb up Montero Mountain. And if we could get <laughs> the uh, water district to give us just a little length uh, of of trail along what's called Whiting Ridge, we could hook up with Sweeney Ridge and make a wow. complete circuit. It would be about 16 miles, which would be wow. just a fantastic, uh, uh, you know. And so yeah. we're really we're really working on a very very parallel vision uh, to mm -hmm. to to try to make these places more accessible to our mm -hmm. our not only mm -hmm. our local public but but to the community at large. And we too, I'm I'm certain mm -hmm. we're going to be getting people from all over the world who who are going to be coming and visiting mm -hmm. that site when that finally gets cranked up in terms of that, that trail yeah. over Devil's Slide. I think that's going to be a magnet for yeah. visitation. Yeah. Well, it's interesting to, to hear both of us talking about working on the California Coastal Trail and connecting mm -hmm. these other trails. Um, uh, we uh, work with the Bay Area Open Space um, mm -hmm. Council, and the nine greater Bay Areas are working on what they call trail, transit to trails. Mm -hmm. So we want people to be able to step outside their door and right. either bike, walk, or take a bus right. to any open space. So that would connect the entire coastal trail to the ridge trail, to the right. bay trail, and the laterals in between. And it sounds like you're working on one of your laterals now. Yes, we are. And can you imagine, I mean, it's too bad you and I aren't going to be here in <laughs> yeah. 300 years when it's all here, right? Most of us won't it's, be here in 300 it's years. It's fantastic. <laughs> but you're right. You know? I, I'm hoping it's sooner than that. But no, you're absolutely right. It, 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 I think that's the key why it's, so, why it's so wonderful to live here in the Bay Area and why it's great to have the community support nonprofit land trusts that are doing this work putting our hearts and souls into it and and it's it's really it it creates this wonderful balance for our public for the people who live 
in more urbanized mm -hmm. settings to be able to come out here and really enjoy these spaces. And not only just the, the, the land, but the, the vistas of the sea at the mm -hmm. same moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, which it, it's not like a Grand Canyon type experience. It goes yeah. as far as you can yeah. see. You know, it's really fantastic. Exactly. So, anyway, yeah. I get enthused. So, um, so <laughs> you are enthusiastic, which is exactly what you should be, right? <laughs> so yes. we're going to try, uh, we're hoping after we finish this trail segment uh -huh. to uh, continue this segment down to, to the Ritz uh -huh. in Half Moon Bay, because there's another segment there that's not completed. Unfortunately, many of those lands are privately held. Right. So for the last six years, we've had a very active campaign to acquire those lands. Right. And um, our community has really come forward to help us, we've had terrific successes. We have a long way to go, right. um, and I. Th but I think you know, as you mentioned before, one of the things about a nonprofit like a land trust is a donor who gives us their either their money or their energy through volunteerism. There, it goes directly to what they want it to do. Right. It's right. not dissipated by anything else. It's right. all we're going to do That's is right. work on acquiring That's and right. caring for these properties and getting these trail accesses in. So it's not dissipated by That's you know right. a city that then has to build a road or you know put, put in a stoplight or something. Yeah. We only do those things that we say we're going to do. So yeah, no, it's a I great investment. It, it is a great <laughs> investment in that regard. I mean, if you if you believe in that concept and that vision then you almost literally can't put your, mm -hmm. your money anywhere. I mean, again, there's challenges throughout the planet, and there's lots of places that money can be well spent. But in terms of value for the dollar, just in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. to be able to, to be here, live here, have your family enjoy this place, have the public enjoy this place, that is really one of the, the you know, just the pearl beyond price. We have another thing that we're doing that's... <clears throat> um, the, the Pedro Point headland that I mentioned is a, is a land that was uh, heavily impacted by off-highway vehicle mm -hmm. use back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and, and uh, then we acquired it in the early 1990s. And uh, we've had some major er erosion problems as a result of the, of the trails mm -hmm. that kind of have been denuded of soil and so on. Mm -hmm. So we're working right now on a fairly sizable grant. We're hoping through the state off-highway vehicle mm -hmm. uh, fund to actually try to recontour, the to decommission a lot some of those trails, recontour yeah. the the lands, get them ready for a much more sustainable trail system. Which mm -hmm. actually the uh, mm -hmm. the national park did that kind of project out on Maury Point. It's been tremendously successful. So we're hoping mm -hmm. to kind of that's yeah. another place where right. in the interim, like eventually yeah. probably that land will go to the yeah. the. the yeah. Um, park, but in any case, it's a, another project. Yeah, well, you bring up an interesting point. Um, many of our supporters, and, and I happen to agree with this, but understand mm -hmm. the logic for right. we can't do this, uh, prefer the more casual so social right. trail, as we right. call them, where folks right. just kind of create a trail. Right. And what I like about that is people do tell us where they want to go, so it's nice right. to know where True. people would like to have True. a trail. However, what we've experienced is that an, un, an, uh, an uncared for trail creates compaction, causes erosion, and, and can, can damage the habitat very exactly. severely. And exactly. with uh, rising sea level, we're having to deal more and more with erosion along the bluff tops. Right. So what we're finding is these coastal trails need to be brought inland right. uh, from the shore edge, right. uh, the cliff edge or the shore edge, and that they need to be um, very carefully contoured. And then that way, we're not exacerbating yeah. the erosion and the runoff. Right. And once we explain that to our supporters that, you know, we agree yeah. with you, it would be yeah. wonderful if we yeah. could all have these exactly. really nice trails. But the fact is we are da we are causing damage through these. And yeah. so we yeah. need to restore that, we you know, rehabilitate them and mm -hmm. still be able to use yeah. them. So uh, we're not using pavement on any right. of our trails. We're using a, 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 um, a soil compound. Of really some, interesting. Some yeah. And it does yeah. meet the ADA. and. Um, and, and so people, right. once they understand, it's like any of us, once we understand why people, why mm -hmm. we're doing things, mm -hmm. people are much more supportive. Yeah, and I, uh, just the last point on that, which is, you know, that you really make a great point. People don't intend to cause no. damage. The people who were writing the OHVs didn't intend to cause damage. Right. It just hap it's just a, a kind of a, a, just a reality that that's in fact what, what happens. And uh, we now have the opportunity to try to, try to put it back to some degree and, and use a little a new awareness of these mm -hmm. things like the you know, issue of climate change. So um, one of the things that we're running out of time and we need to try to think about is future open space projects. And, um, and it, you know, we, we uh, 
we have a limited, I think we have two different kinds of mm -hmm. systems going mm -hmm. on. And in our case, we're kind of limited in terms of acquisitions. And we're starting to shift more into education and stewardship, mm -hmm. essentially, of lands. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I see a, a really important, and building trails and, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. you know, finding, finding the, working with landowners to get the easements for trails and things of that nature. So we're kind of, we're not giving up on, mm -hmm. on doing mm -hmm. on, on the acquisition because there are some key parcels yet to be obtained, right. but you have to have the opportunity. Right. Uh, on the other hand, I think we're starting to really put our energy a lot into this idea mm -hmm. of trying to make, make our lands more uh, accessible, healthier, sustainable. And uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of a direction we're, we're shifting into right sure. now. Yeah. So I don't know, what's, from your perspective? What well, certainly stewardship is, is, is one of the things we absolutely have to do, mm -hmm. which is caring for the lands, right. maintaining the habitat. And um, a, a program we've had for the last few years uh, is um, what we call junior land stewards, mm. where, we, uh, where we've taken young people anywhere from preschool to fifth right. or sixth grade, and we put them through a series of programs. We walk out to an open space, and we talk about it, and I think, uh, you know, we have to plan for the future, and we have to, we have to educate the, the young people about mm -hmm. the importance, mm -hmm. you know, they can't just assume that it's always going to be there. Right. And I was, I was really struck by a comment that a, that a young student said to me um, after one of our first visits, I think she was about a fourth or fifth grader, she, she looked at me, and after I explained about open space and it belonging to everyone, she looked at me and she said, that's my land. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I mean, this is really an, that's such a huge topic. <laughs> and I said, yes, it is. It it's your is. land, yeah, yeah. and it's our land, yeah. and it's our responsibility to care for it. Right. And right. I think that's what we're trying to relay yeah. to the next yeah. generation, is not only is it your land and my land and our land, but with that comes the responsibility right. of caring for it in perpetuity, which part of that is educating the next generation so that they can take over right, when, when right. we can no longer do that exactly. work. Yeah, no, I, I, th I think that's beautifully said. Um, so do you have any uh, uh, ways that the uh, people can contact you and things that you want to uh, maybe project to announce to uh, our, our audience in terms sure. of ways of supporting uh, the Coastside yeah. Land Trust? So uh, we're very active. We have uh, an event or two every month. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a restoration work day mm -hmm. or um, an educational activity where we learn about birds or we learn about mm -hmm. wildflowers and we go out on the land and identify birds and plants. Right. We also have a gallery, so every month or two, two or three months we have a gallery opening. Mm -hmm. We currently have our California Wildlife Show up. Our next show is going to be a California Wildflowers and mm -hmm. California Landscapes, awesome. Spring Landscapes. Um, all of that is on our website. Okay. Um, and, and you can also, on the website, there's an email address. Uh -huh. You can send an email and ask to be put on our notification list. Great. And every, about every two weeks, you'd receive an email of the upcoming events and invitations oh, awesome. to attend those events with us. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. Well, that's a professional land trust organization. <laughs> and let me tell you a little bit about what's going on with a more of a volunteer land trust. Uh, we do fortunately have some really cool things happening right now. And um, our, every month we have a, a stewardship group, uh, usually meets on the last Sunday. Uh, you can access information about our, our activities on uh, uh, pedropointheadland.org. And uh, Lynn Adams is our stewardship coordinator. She does a fantastic job here in town with the Pacific Beach Co Coalition, among others. But for us, she works as a, a wonderful steward and organizes these events, and we do many, many different things. We kind of follow the ecological calendar. We collect seeds when we need to, we plant when we need to, we remove some invasives, and we, uh, we have a couple of really unique uh, projects. We're collaborating with San Francisco State on a, on a restoration erosion control project where we've mm -hmm. actually revegetated, and we've done it in such a way that we'll be able to get some data and really look at the, the performance um, over time. And uh, we did just recently get a, a grant from Coastal Conservancy to do this really cool uh, virtual Pedro Point Headland project where we're going to uh, use uh, newer technology and, uh, so that people can go up with a cell phone and, and queue into a card and get, a, a, you know, get, get information like a, like a sort of naturalists will provide information about the site and that kind of thing, which we, we hope will really be uh, kind of fun and exciting and a prototype for future 
trail experiences, learning experiences over time. Uh, also, you can come to uh, Pacific Land Trust org. That's our website, and find out more about the organization. Uh, we uh, we hope to aspire to to <laughs> to your to your level of professionalism at some point in time. And I think uh, uh, really admire the work that you guys are doing, and, and and it's a pleasure to to have a chance to meet you and talk with you. So uh, anyway, Likewise. thank you. Likewise, Mike. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we look forward to we look forward to um, maybe working on a, a group project together sometime. Right? Yeah. That, I mean, at some point, the, the the Pacifica Land Trust Coastal Trail and the Coastside yeah. Land Trust Coastal Trail well, they do is come, going to come, meet. You know, just like the just like the old Ocean Shore Railroad, it, it did finally it did go from here to there and by Ingo. Yeah, no, I think I think it's really great. Uh, we we've enjoyed this just hopefully as much as you because we haven't had this chance to have this conversation in the past and. Uh, Anyway, yes, I absolutely agree with you, Joe. It's, we've we've got to build on this and uh, and keep this this uh, you know this this wonderful public nonprofit undertaking uh, you know uh, you know still cranking along and and doing the good things that you're doing and hopefully that we're doing and doing more of them together. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to just thank the audience for. Uh, joining us and participating in this discussion. Uh, you could probably tell that I had a, a wonderful time talking to Joe about the work she's been doing and sharing a little bit about what we're doing. And would, would you like to say anything? In, in sure. Um, uh, well, <coughs> well, just as, as Mike is saying, it's been wonderful to have this opportunity here at Pacific Currents to share with you the work that we're doing. And I know I speak for Mike here uh, when I say, you know, we want you to be involved in our organizations in whatever capacity you feel comfortable doing so. Mm -hmm. uh, you're welcome and we're quasi-public organizations and we'd love to see you at an event or in some, you know, at something in the future very soon. Get out there and enjoy that open space. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>